The next section, 6.2, we're going to talk about a particular distribution, the binomial probability distribution. Uh, by the end of this, we're going to talk about what is a binomial experiment, we're going to compute probabilities, and then we're going to talk about the mean and standard deviation. So a binomial random variable, you might kind of guess something from um, that binomial, um, what that might mean. If you look at these three examples that I've listed here, um, we flip a fair coin three times and we count the number of heads. Uh, we use a random number to guess the answer on a four question multiple choice quiz and we just record the number of correct answers. So we're just randomly guessing which answer and then we're recording. Uh, we roll a die five times and record the number of sixes. Um, I don't know if it's obvious looking at these, but what we're doing is we're just counting the number of times something happens. So either it does or it doesn't happen. Either it's heads or tails. Either we're right or we're wrong. Either it's a six or it's not a six. So that's this binomial idea. It's one or the other. So a binomial experiment has four conditions for it, and that, that bi part is definitely one of them. So the first condition is there's a fixed number of trials. So with the, the number of sixes, we were rolling the die five times. So rolling it five times. It's not that we're rolling it until we get a six. We're rolling it five times and we're counting the number of sixes. So fixed number of trials. Number two, the trials are all independent. So what happened on the first trial doesn't affect the probability on the second trial. Third, there are only two outcomes. That's the binomial, success or failure. Uh, and then fourth, um, the probability is constant. And I always think that these two, the independence and the constant probability, really are related. I feel like it's either all or nothing with those. Sometimes you're trying to determine is this a binomial probability and usually it's those two, they either both fail or both are correct. So what we want to do next is we want to try to def try to come up with a way to calculate these probabilities, a formula for this. So let's look at an example. Uh, suppose we have a random number and we're going to guess the answer on a four question multiple choice quiz uh, and record the number of correct answers. So if we look at each question, there's two possibilities. So for the first question, we could be right or wrong. Second question, we could be right or wrong. Third question, right or wrong. Fourth question, oh, we just did uh, ooh, four questions here. It looks like, oh, I'm looking at this here. It looks like we just did three questions and recorded the number of correct answers, right? So let's do a quick fix on that. So what we want to do now is come up with this formula. Let's use an example of um, guessing on a quiz. So let's say there are three questions on a multiple choice quiz. And each question has four choices. And what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of correct answers. So the first question could either be right or wrong. Second question after that could be right or wrong. So we could get the first question and the second question right. First question right, second question wrong, etc. If we continue this again, we could have three in a row, or right, right, wrong, right, wrong, right, etc. And so we have all of these different possibilities. What we want to do is count the number that are correct. That's all we're really interested in. So on these three questions, how many do we get correct? We've got all these different possibilities. Uh, you may notice similarity here. This is kind of like the heads and tails. Um, the difference here is they're not all equally likely. So a head and tail is not equally likely. Getting it right and wrong is not equally likely. We'll talk about that in a second. What we're going to do is we're going to define a random variable. We're going to let x be the number of correct answers. So what I want to look at is what's the probability that x could be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4? And so let's look at 0. Now I have here that the probability is 3 fourths to the third. So 0 is down here. It's all three of them wrong. And the key here is that there, there's four choices for each question. So if there are four choices and we're randomly choosing one of them, three of them are going to be wrong. So the probability of getting it wrong is three-fourths. And now we're just randomly answering the three questions. So 
those questions are all going to be independent, we can just multiply 3 fourths three times to get the probability that all three are wrong. So that's this probability here. The probability of getting one right would be if we look at, uh, let's look at this line right here. The probability of getting the first one right would be one fourth. We've got four choices, four choices. So the probability of getting it right would be one out of four. And then the probability of getting this one wrong, three fourths and three fourths. But you'll notice I have an additional three in front here. That's because there's one, two, three possibilities for that. Similarly, uh, for two, two right would be, say we look at this example here for two, uh, the probability of getting these two here, three, four, or sorry, one fourth, one fourth, and then three fourths. And then there's one, two, three ways that could happen. Um, probability of getting three right, there's only one way for that to happen, and it's one fourth times one fourth times one fourth. Let's dive in a little bit deeper here on this case where the probability that we get one right. So I want to look at each component of this and understand what it's explaining here. So the one fourth is the probability of getting one correct answer. So each question has four options. And so if we're randomly choosing it, the probability of getting it right would be one out of four. The three fourths is incorrect, three fourths, but then there are two, we got two of those that are incorrect. And then the three in the front is the number of ways that we can get one correct. It could be the first one, the second one, or the third one. So we come up with this general formula for binomial probability distribution. And there's three parts to it. Let's focus and kind of do them um, in order of kind of what makes sense, at least like what's the easiest thing to look at. So P to the X means that there are X successes. So P is probability of success. That's what we use here. And so there are X successes. So the opposite of that then is one minus P. Those are the failures. And so then the rest of them, N minus X, are the failures. So N minus X failures with a probability of one minus P. And then this combination in front is the number of ways to choose the positions of those X successes. So this is the formula for the binomial probability distribution. We are going to show how to do this in StatCrunch. Um, it's pretty straightforward in there, but you got to kind of know what you're doing. And so make sure to get a handle on this. I will give you this formula, but if all you know is the formula, um, that's not going to be that helpful once you get into the calculations. So let's do another one here, a different multiple choice question, similar to this. Now I have five questions. Each question has four choices again, and we're randomly choosing an answer. What is the probability of getting four or five of the questions uh, correct? Now, it'd be pretty tough here. We're just guessing. Uh, we're doing it randomly. And um, what would be the probability of getting four or five correct? So first task, we have to figure out what it is we're counting. Uh, so in this case, we're counting the number that are correct. Next, we need to talk about, well, how many total trials are there? And what's the probability of success? So the total number of trials, well, we have five questions. So with five questions, the total number of trials is five. Uh, if we look at P, that's the probability of a success. So since there are four choices and we're just randomly guessing, the probability of a success would be one fourth. Now I want to know, OK, what is the probability that I get four or five correct? So probability of four or five correct would be um, the probability of four correct or the probability of five correct. And I've just put those in the formula here. And I did have stat crunch up. Let me see if I can get it. There it is. There was my calculation there. So in stat crunch, there's a calculator here that you can use, uh, the binomial calculator right there. You can type in n is five, probability of success 0.25. I want to find the probability that x is at least four. Now you could do four and then five and add them together. Um, here I could just do greater than or equal to four and that'll add all those up. And so there's 0 0.0156, which there it is, 0 0.0156. Okay, you're going to need to practice these binomial calculations. Um, I didn't want to do a ton of examples here. These videos get kind of long. So I would encourage you, um, work through the homework, look in the online examples, and hopefully that will help. 
Last thing I want to talk about is the mean and standard deviation. Let's talk about mean next. So I've got an example here. Ray Allen um, played basketball in the NBA for like 16 years, I think. Um, most recently, he was with the Miami Heat. One of the best free throw shooters where you get fouled and you just shoot a, a free shot with no one else guarding you. Uh, he made about 89.4% of his free throw attempts. So the question is, if he were to shoot 100 times, how many would we expect him to make? Or what if he shot 500 times? So if you think about that, he's shooting it 100 times. He makes 89.4%. Wouldn't we just expect him to make about 89.4 of them? I mean, the same thing for 500. If he makes 89.4% of them, wouldn't we just multiply? Um, so that certainly is a very reasonable thing to do without thinking of a formula. But we could call that the mean of the binomial random variable. If he shot 100 free throws, he's not going to make 89.4 every time. Right? He's going to make 80 sometimes, have a really bad day, make 94 sometimes, or you know, maybe 89 or 92. Or, but in the long run, if he repeated that, 100 free throws, 100 free throws, 100 free throws, 100 free throws, if he always makes 89.4%, and if that's his long-term average, that's his probability, then we would expect in the long run that he would average 89.4. So the mean of a binomial random variable, simply take the number of trials times the probability of success pretty obvious. The standard deviation, there's a little more to this. I'm not going to talk about any theory here. Um, you're probably going to be asked that in the homework, have one or two questions about the standard deviation, but that's also not going to be an exam question. To me, it's not a particularly useful uh, formula to know. Uh, it doesn't occur very often, so we're going to focus on the mean of the binomial random variable. All right, so I think that is it. That is the last side, slide for section 6.2. Don't, be, uh, don't forget to look at the examples in the online lesson, the link below, and uh, come to class if you have any questions.